creative person has a special gift. His private vision of the world. Through words, ideas, images, he touches our view of the 20th century. This man is a film director. He lives in India. Though his background is Indian, there are many Western influences in his work. Though his films are Indian, they have reached out to a worldwide audience. In them, a gallery of men and women depicts the shifts and conflicts of this century. The stories are of India. The human problems and emotions are universal. Yes, I had a film at the festival. This is my latest one, Nayak, which means the hero. It's about a film star and study of um, what sudden wealth and fame uh, does to a, an ordinary middle-class young man. That got the prize for direction. So I think it went over quite well. People enjoy it, seem to enjoy it. It just happens that uh, I have had a film every year uh, in some festival or the other over the last uh, eight or nine years. So I've been to Moscow, I've been to Berlin four times, been to Venice. My first film, Bothit Machali, the first part of the trilogy that I made, uh, got a prize in Cannes. I didn't go that time because we had no money. And then when I made the second film, that was sent to Venice. Then I was able to attend the festival. And that got the Grand Prix. And that has been a great help because uh, I have a sort of a foreign market now and uh, quite a number of my films have played abroad in Britain and the States. I've served on the jury at Berlin, in Moscow, in Brussels. The pace of the film, the very texture of the film is changing. And so there's a widening of thematic range. Along with it, uh, a different mode of expression which is dictated by, by the cutting and, and the use of the camera and lights. So I've been noticing really very deep and uh, significant changes in the style of filmmaking. My route uh, here in Bengal and uh, a trip abroad is good for looking up friends and looking, taking a look at the latest films, but my work is here and I was born in Calcutta and I was brought up. And I love this city and I never want to leave it. I do feel very strongly about Western cities and, and the behavior of people in general that uh, it's terribly mechanized. They're not their own masters, it seems sometimes. It's, they're, they're always guided by a timetable and they have to stick to schedules. And whereas here, even in the city, people have, they're, they're to a certain extent their own masters. They're not nearly as mechanized as in the West. And I feel there's more contact with living reality. I can quite see the foreigner's first uh, reaction as he comes into the city as being somewhat unfavorable. For one thing, there's a lot of people and there's a lot of squalor, but Calcutta is not just that. It's got many facets, many aspects to it. It's an extremely rich and dense and complex city. And uh, as a filmmaker, that is what mainly fascinates me because I'm, even now I keep on discovering uh, parts of the city which I'd never known before. It's very lively and it's intellectually very alert because we have a very strong theater uh, movement, literary movement. There's always something happening and uh, people are reacting to events and situations in a very, in a very voluble fashion. Of course, it sometimes also leads to things like riots and um, such uh, other unfortunate incidents, but that only shows that the people are in a state of constantly reacting to things. And as a filmmaker, I find this interesting. Ever since my first film, I've used uh, both 
professionals and non-professionals and also people who would never face the camera or never even thought of facing the camera. When I write my scenario, I have uh, each character I can sort of visualize and it's, I, I look for people, for faces uh, which conform to my visual conception of an actor. And if I find a professional who fits the part, I take a professional. If not, then I start looking around for amateur actors or non-actors, even people just whom I meet on a tram or a bus on the street. There's a belief that all children are natural actors, which they're not. I had great trouble with a boy in Pathir Pachali. He was very shy and I had to use all my patience, my persuasion. I treat them as adults. I, I sort of take them into my confidence and uh, whisper instructions to them. And they, they, I find that after maybe the first day or the second day onwards, they're, they're very obedient and they do what I ask them to do. That's my method with children and there are various other methods which I have to use with various other actors. It's never a set method with any actor. It's, I've kept it sort of flexible, I get to know the person and then I use a certain method which I think will work best in terms of that particular actor. India, with its huge home market, is one of the world's largest film producers. There are studios in several cities, production in half a dozen languages. In contrast to the flamboyant style of picture making common to India, Satyajit Ray works in a thoughtful, considered way. Every aspect of his production is planned, not always the case in Indian studios. From his actors, he seeks naturalness, authenticity, a total break from the high theatrical style of most Indian films. Mr. Ray is wonderful to work with because he is very patient. When taking the scenes, he would explain the situation and ask us to act the situation the way we wanted to do. That is, he wouldn't dictate the way we should move our hands or put our heads in a certain direction. Not like that. He would just tell us that this particular character is feeling like this in this particular moment. First of all, I was very reluctant to go into it at all because, you know, I had that middle class inhibition against being uh, on the screen, though I had acted on the stage. So that was non-professional stage, of course. I didn't like the role either because the role in Pothil Panchali, his first film in which I was, it was the role of a village wife. But when I started working with him, it was absolutely different. I got so much involved in it and uh, inspired by the team spirit, you should say. I never felt anything was forced on me. The genuineness of the atmosphere and his direction as well. You know, as a director, he he wouldn't, uh, he would just describe the particular scene or the emotion he wants to, wants me to do. And would just stand by and see how I can do it. So I also felt that I was contributing to the creation, to, to, to his creative uh, effort. Well, uh, Two leading young stars of the Bengali films, both discoveries of Ray. Actor Sumitra Chatterjee and actress Madhubai Mukherjee. She was being offered with a role that time. She only went there with the sole intention of meeting a great director. And she was very much impressed by him. The second time when you went there, you were offered with the role. No, shop broke me, Judy. Put him a shabby nota then. That put it, Judy. I see. She says that uh, she, he gives you. Uh, entire liberty to perform in the beginning. Only she, he interferes only when you make a mistake or he wants to guide you or correct you in some direction. Both in the studio and on location, Ray's work is well prepared. There's a steady output, one or two films each year. 
The tempo of rehearsal is calm, but quick. His actors and crew work smoothly. When we are shooting in a studio, the shots are taken more or less as their plan because you're limited in terms of the set and angles. On location, you are always improvising, finding new angles, making sort of last minute decisions which uh, affect the, the original sh uh, shooting script, the shooting scheme, shall we say. So in a way, uh, it's more exciting on location because uh, you are being more inventive in a sense. While in the studio, which is not bad, perhaps, because you work more or less according to your plans. Shooting plans, you see. Shapke do achalaga. Cut. Fine. Arta niye ni bhai. Arta niye ni just one more. Hey, hatta last day uta tha na. I to relax. I to relax. While on location, even a, a sudden sort of uh, effect of light excites you, and you you maybe have an additional shot or do the scene a little differently, this could be or a certain a shower, or certain, a certain viewpoints which you suddenly discover. Village India, seen through the lens of Satyajit Ray, has come alive for audiences in many countries. In his early films, it was the day-to-day -day life of rural people that he portrayed. European films and directors, Jean Renoir, John Huston, gave Ray his early inspiration. Learning from the films of Europe and America, he achieved an insight into the life of India that no other medium could convey. Turning from the local scene he knows so well, Ray now thinks of more ambitious projects, international films with big budgets and major stars. He's planning now a science fiction story to be filmed in India. And this has a certain atmosphere, kind of a meeting place with roads with a pathway from that side, one from that side, one from that side. It's a kind of a junction. And you have enormous big trees here, the tamarind and the bow tree there. We consider it first from the point of view of the story, whether we actually need a place like this. It's nice. One could take a 360 degree hand here. The power of his films comes largely from authenticity, character, and atmosphere. Seeking out houses, landscapes, villages, the precise look of a place he has in mind, Ray combs the countryside in his exacting search. And uh, it's certainly much easier working in a village than in a city, like Calcutta, for instance. I think we should get the camera out and take a shot here. Yeah. I think we'll shoot it with the sun. It's so typical of the Bengal village, you see, we have to have a temple, either one or two together. And uh, it's an inevitable part of the 
conventional Bengali village. And the trees all around and everything makes a nice picture. This is a fairy tale, so we need compositions that are very strong pictorially. Ray's first film was literally an amateur production. But it won a prize at the Cannes Film Festival, 1956. And ever since, he has insisted on working by his own methods in his own style. Well, let's get the camera. Well, I'm used to certain things now, which, for instance, I have a cameraman who does the lighting, who used to operate the camera before, but now, I, for the last three films, I've been operating my own camera, and I find, using an Ariflex, that I find uh, the best position to judge the acting is through the lens. I think he knows exactly what he wants. I don't find it uh, difficult. Sometimes it's advantageous for me because I feel like a cameraman having a camera operator. And, uh, and I think it's very good for the cameraman because he can see the lighting during the take. And if the cameraman operates his own camera, uh, he's, he's, I think, more busy with the camera operation than to see the lighting. And if they let me do that abroad, I'm used to a tremendous lot of freedom right from my first film. And that's the main thing that worries me, whether I'll be able to get the freedom that I want to the extent that I have it here now. Let's go. Fine. I did 10 years of advertising work before I came into films. I did um, the illustration for a book called Pothir Pachali. I was uh, doing graphic designing, advertising work, book work, all sorts of things. And then I did illustration for this book and it struck me even then that it would make uh, quite a remarkable film. And at the same time, I was doing some illustration and book jacket designing for a new publisher. They published some of my father's books. And I have more or less kept it up. I design posters for my films, do some of the advertising campaign, occasionally design the leaflets, and have also designed the credits. And when I started making films, I almost uh, inevitably wrote my script in the visual form, as you find here. You see, the, these are scenes. It's a shooting script, actually, but they're not typed. They're in little drawings with notes about the dialogue on the side. And uh, there are also architectural things and uh, in discussions with art directors. I find that this form helps in my discussion with the cameraman, as well as uh, it helps me, because I always have a kind of a visual reference of the scene I'm going to shoot. These are drawings of costumes which uh, the various characters in this film, Charulotta, wore in the film, and I have uh, indicated the particular sets and the sequences in which uh, they were used. This is the second character, the husband, and uh, here we have uh, Charulotta, the main character, the heroine, with the usual indications down the side. Saris, which we had to specially buy, and blouses with frills and Victorian everything, mm -hmm. because this was a period piece, 1870. With his art director, Ray often revisits the old houses and palaces of Calcutta. He's very meticulous, very careful, and looks after each little detail, which is ultimately good for the results, what you see on the screen. I like to work very carefully. I don't like to work in a slapdash manner. So if he is difficult, it's better perhaps for the results. Among the stalls of traditional craftsmen, the smiths, carvers, and idol makers, he soaks up the atmosphere and detail of the crowded city. His intimate awareness of detail, of the texture of daily life, gives to his films the feeling of reality, of truth. You know, it's the way all sorts of things are put together in a house, in a room, in a small space. We prefer to go always to the locations for fresh ideas. Are you 
he takes care of all the details particularly because i think the properties in the room in a in a house belong to the character that's why the details are so important the look of the details the look of the properties its age the style so many things inside the drawing room that's wonderful idea i think we know this house very well because we've been here before looking for props this belongs to mr mitter whose son was at college with me and as you can see they have a wonderful collection of period pieces and i have made something like 3 or 4 period films some of the best pieces of furniture tables and vases and clocks and escritoires have come from this house and uh, we also get uh, props from auction houses on loan but the best things have come from such houses as this one this window with the decoration on the pane struck uh, both my art director and myself as being something quite special and uh, very beautiful so we use this as a model for our windows in my film charulotta calcutta is proud of ray the native son who has projected the life of Bengal before the world. Wherever he goes in the city, he's known by people in all walks of life. If it's in the morning and if it's in the north, you can be chased or surrounded by schoolboys. They sort of pester you for autographs. And they sometimes they just follow you wherever you're going. It's been happening for such a long time that it has ceased to surprise me. I think it did in the early stages, but now I'm more or less used to it. And of course, when I'm out on tour or somewhere, even in remote places like Rajasthan, for instance, we were looking for a location and the train stopped at a small station and we got down and went into a bookstall and the bookstall owner immediately recognized me and offered me a cup of tea. So it can be a nice thing at times. I'm composing a song for my next film, uh, The Fantasy. It's going to be a sort of a musical. The two main characters, two youngsters from a uh, Bengal village. One of them is a singer, the other is a drummer. They go out and have all sorts of adventures in various places all over India. And it's really a sort of a musical with uh, dances and even battles, which will be shot to the rhythm of music that I'll compose for the film. This is a piece of music uh, from my film Charulotta, which uh, has a Scotch ballad as the basis of the tune. Um, this uh, song was used in a Bengali version by Tagore in the film. It was sung by the heroine. And uh, this comes back several times in the film. And I use a the Western instruments, mainly, such as the such as violins, uh, a vibraphone, uh, a xylophone, cellos, in combination with Indian drums. And this is a common device which I often use in this film, since it had a very sophisticated Westernized setting. It needed that. I have never written any music which can be clearly identified as either folk or classical or Indian or Western because the films have a look generally which are not wholly Indian even if it's a modern story laid in Calcutta. There are all sorts of things which have very Western uh, connotations. It's so Western that you have to devise a kind of a, uh, a 
combination thing, you see. It can't be either wholly India or wholly Western. So it's, it's music. He saw the film not with just an Indian eye, emotional eye, but the eye of the world, I should say like that. And that's why he's, and with his art and his talent, his pictures were very attractive to the West. Though the, the background, the, 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 the whole thing was Indian, traditionally and pictorially. But the eye was partly foreign too. In fact, it's the critics who've done it, they've analyzed the themes of my films and they've arrived at the conclusion that my main theme seems to be the, the conflict between the old India and the new India. And maybe they're right, because uh, it's there, I mean, I can't deny it, it's there. Let's come back again and again. It is not just today's India here now, in a particular place, but something, something deeper than that. Um, it is, I would say, uh, something of India which has been there for a long time, and over and above that, uh, Ray's films chronicle something of the change which has taken place in this body of tradition in India in the last hundred years. I would say that they are, in fact, more profoundly true of Indian life than any other films we've made in India. It's been largely gone into my films, this question of political involvement. If it's a an international question of great import. I've taken part in demonstrations and even made speeches. Only maybe on an average once a year because the rest of all my time taken up with either shooting a film or planning the next one. I feel very, very strongly that my main business is to make films. Of course, one reacts to all the elements of poverty in the city and all the distress around you but you keep feeling that as an artist what you have to do is uh, perhaps make a film about them which will bring them into the consciousness of a large section of public make them feel about this distress or this state of affairs <laughs> Naturally, naturally, but that is all I can do as a filmmaker, state certain things in, through the film and try to make the audience, the people, think and be conscious about them. I, I don't, I've never proposed solutions to problems because I think it's beyond my powers to do so. But as an artist, I think it is within my power to present certain aspects as faithfully and honestly as possible, so that it's brought to the consciousness of the thinking man. Two by four, take one. Action! Dunduri. Dwarajka jerete kesarche. निर्भेजल प्रेम जिन अन्य खाद रही